I was going to go easy on you, not to hurt your feelings. You f***ing irritate the shit out of me! I'm only going to get this one chance. It's just a feeling I've got. Like something's about to happen, but I don't know what. All I hear, go get the money. So I go get it. Hate means I do something right. So I'm a la- Boom! Oh, two in a day. Two in a day. This time, Gap selling Keenan. I just dropped one 20 minutes ago, and we got another daring soul who's going to go at it again. This time, it is Robert Riley. Robert, welcome, my man. Yeah, glad to be here, Keenan. I've been looking forward to this call. How are You're, you? I'm great. I'm great. Take one second to tell, tell well, I, we know your name now, but tell us who you work for and what we're going to talk about. Yeah, so I work for Ask Nicely. Um, they're <laughs> customer. <laughs> I like that. Ask nicely. You can imagine when you call a gatekeeper and you say, you know, where are they from? Where are you from? Ask nicely. And then they're like, hang up the phone. So Never even uh, thought about that. That's dope. Yeah. Um, but we're a customer experience platform. And really what we help is CEOs like you to uh, increase customer lifetime value, um, decrease customer acquisition costs, drive expansion. Um, so yeah, I've got some questions for you today and uh, excited, to, uh, excited to have this conversation. All right, let's go, jump in. All right, so I took a look at the a Sales Guy Consulting's website and you know, I look and you guys have recruiting and you have uh, you know, speaking presentations and you have sales training. And I know you have gap selling and then your new gap selling Salesforce app exchange. Can you just tell me like out of all those sources of revenue, like which one's which one's your money maker? Which one's the one that you're doing the most business with? Most business has defined a number of opportunities or total dollar? Uh, I mean, total revenue, I guess. Training. Training? Why is that? It's more transactional right okay. and we can get more people through it it just scales better when it comes to consulting there's only just me right so um i can only take so many clients on now the average sales the average sales price on the consulting is much higher but i can't do as many so in the end training right and you guys so it's not just you doing all of the trainings right you you i heard you've hired a few new people to do trainings for you I've had more salespeople to sell the training. We'll hire new trainers in 2020. Okay. And um, so can you tell me a little bit about like, once you actually bring on a new customer for training, what does that relationship look like? Is it like a, a one-off training? Are they signing up for a whole year, like five training slots throughout a year? What's a typical training uh, sales look like? That's a good question. Generally speaking, it's, well, it depends on the client and the size of the team. So we only uh, we'll only do training for up to 25 people. Sometimes we'll stretch to 30, but never more than that. So if their sales team is bigger than that, then it's multiple training. So I just got finished training of well over 100 people in the month of November, where we just did I think we did nine trainings uh, uh, over a month period. Right. So it really just depends. Okay. And uh, so it depends if you were to like stick your finger in the air and, and ballpark like what it what a typical sales uh sales training partnership looks like is it like four times throughout a year five times what's kind of the average um so it, i would say on average the relationship lasts for about six months sometimes it's just a couple of trainings i'm done and that's it other times uh, we do a training and then they want additional training and they want consulting. And so we, you know, we work with them for six months. Other times we get into consulting relationships that last as long as two or three years. Okay. And so once, uh, once you actually sign up a new customer, obviously it's, there's variability into what that relationship looks like. Can you just give me a high level overview of like what those customer touch points look like after you hire on a new customer or bring on a new customer? Because we're a service, it's highly interactive, right? right? So we go out, you know, we go out and do the training. We provide follow-up emails. We schedule follow-on meetings to, you know, if it's it really depends on if it's in the selling concept of it or the execution phase of it, right? So in the execution phase, we're talking constantly and we're, you know, I'm going out on site and, and spending time with them. If it's if it's the 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 service is ended then it's just staying in touch with emails or something 
periodically to see how they're doing, to check in, see if they're seeing the progress. And you know, that's about it. Okay. And how much time would you say you spend, you know, checking up and following up to really make sure that um, you're delivering value for your clients? Okay. For those who are we're still executing on the service, I'll be at training or, or the consulting. Yeah, exactly. All the time. Remember, we're a service, right? So right. we're a service and we're actually, you know, in front of them, dealing with them on a regular basis. So uh, all the time. Okay. And how do you, so if you say you hire, you, you're doing your very first training with a new client, um, you just finish it you feel like you knocked it out of the park. How do you like how do you measure the effectiveness of a training for a client or what they thought about that overall training um so we we have a uh, uh survey we use survey gizmo and we have a survey that goes out right afterwards then we also um many times our um our uh cust our customers themselves they do their own little survey as well um and then they give us the the immediate feedback um feedback has not been something we've been short of then we also have a g2 account where people go and leave it on g2 as well so it's it we get a lot of feedback really fast cool and once you get that feedback what do you do with it nothing i mean not nothing. nothing no not right now nothing so you get so um say you get one of your reps writes in and, and says you know i didn't get as much value out of this <laughs> that's funny that's awesome it's never happened Never I, happened. I'm not, I'm not bullshitting you. I'm not. I believe it. So I believe it. That's a great question. But I, I, I've been lucky as all get up and all shit. That has never happened. As a matter of fact, it's just the opposite. Like literally, I, I had someone send me something just the other day. It was like, Keen, I could sit through that that your training session for another ten hours. It was that dope. That's awesome. Well, what in that case when when. You have multiple reps coming to you saying, hey, I love this. I want to sit in 10 hours of, of your training. Like, I, I want to see more of you. How do you actually leverage that information to, to expand your existing relationship with the, the actual buyer? How, how do you leverage that? I send it right to the buyer. I send it right to them. Then I okay. see that, I send it right to the buyer. Okay. And... Uh, so you're you're bringing on you're bringing on new clients or, or new trainers, right? And so for for a CEO like you, who's you know all about gap selling, you've created this vision for for salespeople. You have a pretty strong brand promise, and so you're bringing on three new people. How are you going to be able to easily understand? If, how are you going to be able to maintain that brand promise? Um, you know, make sure that they're actually executing um, on their trainings. That's a great question. That is one of my concerns. Um, right now, the we're, we're going to start building a, a train the trainer program, um, and that part of that program is they're gonna. I'm gonna have to go out and sit with them for multiple trainings to watch, evaluate, assess how they do, and then the expectation is once they're done, then we'll leverage. To your point, then we'll leverage the um, the uh, surveys at the end of each one to evaluate the trainers. Okay, and um, it, when you actually when you actually bring that kind of report of, of your trainings, what is that what is that feedback loop going to look like? So you get the you get the feedback today. Is it going to be like a weekly meeting, or how are you gonna how are you gonna showcase all this information to your new sales trainers? I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, think, I think, look, I think one of the things we'll do is we'll provide um, coaching. So we're going to leverage our own coaching methodology and we'll have coaching sessions where we, um, we either have someone audit them or we video them or whatever. And then we can evaluate the trainers on a, you know, on some sort of time base once a month or once a quarter or whatever and provide coaching and feedback there. Um, as far as the, uh, what we'll probably do is track the scores because I understand the, the scoring. So we'll be we'll create some set of metrics and see how people s score from the feedback they get from the clients, right? Across a, a number of, of criteria, um, including entertainment value, um, humor, um, ability to deliver the concepts, ability to challenge the crowds. So we'll have a whole bunch of stuff. We'll evaluate that way. Okay, so did I capture that right? That you, the plan is like once a quarter to meet up with them and review their feedback that's from the prior recording? Like that's a guess. Cause here's the deal, Rob. I know this is coming, but I'm a, I'm a, as, as Gary B says, I'm a counterpuncher, right? I put something out there. I see what happens and then I, I, I move and adjust. 
So I know that we're gonna have to evaluate them. I know we're gonna have to um, uh, have a way to assess if they're good. How we're gonna do that, I don't know yet. Okay, um, so how many, how many new trainings do you expect, like in a given month, how many trainings do you think one of your new trainers is going to be doing like in their first month or second month? How on their gonna... own on their own, or after they've been approved and certified? I, I mean, either way, um, probably, probably more relevant after they've been approved and certified, but. Well, shit, as many as we can get them, but you know, as many as we can get them. So I think the, I think what we're going to think is anywhere from four to eight would be a, you know, would keep the trainer busy. Um, Maybe I think a full workload is going to be 12 a month, I think, is what we're thinking right now because they got to fly around. So let's just say let's just say 10 to 12. OK, so you so you're saying that your your trainer is going to have, you know, they're going to do their first training. So so in the in the course of a whole quarter, they could be doing up to 36 different trainings um, by themselves, by themselves. Is that correct? Once yeah. They're actually yeah. Yeah. OK. So what happens? What happens if they're? I mean, what happens if they're? They do a training, and you know, what happens if they have some mistakes in training one, right? What happens if you know? What happens if their first month they're a little rocky? Um, would you come in and, and course correct, or would you wait? Of course, end of, of course. Okay. Okay. So if they do, uh, so say they did training today and they have another training on uh, Friday. So how how often are you actually getting in there and looking at the actual? actual hey, self? that was good. So right now I have no idea. I have no idea how I assess from training to training, other than the um, other than the the survey reviews. And why would that be a problem? Well, I don't know that it would be unless they fucked up and I didn't get to find out till they fucked up till later. Right. And so, so, I mean, is it fair to say that if, if they did a training today and they had another training Friday and you didn't know if this tr particular training went well, that they maybe do the same thing they did this training on the training on Friday? Yeah. Yeah. Th that That's absolutely a risk. Okay. And when you're scaling, so that's just one rep. What happens if, if the same thing's going hey, on? With all look, I, dude, you're doing a pretty good job, right? But you keep asking me what if, right? Yeah. So you're asking yeah. me to self-diagnose. Right. Right. So, so try not to get me to self-diagnose. And also you're trying to get, you're trying to get me to buy off into a future concept, right? Where I'm not there yet. You see right. what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it's tricky because you haven't found a problem I have now. What you're really trying to do is sell me on a problem you think I might have down the road, which actually did a fairly decent job of getting me to realize, hey, if this person screws up and they have another one coming up, they could screw it up again, right? So of course, of course that could be a problem. No shit. That's what the love of money does. Yeah, and um, so I mean, e even, even looking at what you're personally doing, and I know, I, I mean, you you build gap selling, so I'm sure you're doing a pretty damn good job yourself. But, but uh, I mean, how do you know that uh, just just in today? How do you know if, if the training you do on Tuesday is is better or worse than the training that you're going to do on Friday? Well, here's the cool part: I'm the ultimate judge. So in that, and the customers, and the customers love it. Like literally, uh, I wish there were some customers on on the phone here um they're paying attention because uh it they're they blow they blow people out of the water dog the, the people it's I, you know good reviews has not been the issue like it, people are called transformational is the word they use and by the way real quick uh ammon yeah. mckinley ammon mckinley said too much discovery actually ammon i hope i said your name right he's not doing too much discovery i think what you're sensing is he's having a hard time finding the specific discovery questions to find the actual problem he's trying to solve so he's kind of going all over the place which look i, I love the effort he's doing a great job but i want everybody to pay attention this is not too much discovery because if you haven't found a problem you keep going and if you stop and start pitching your fucking product before you found a problem that's worse than too much discovery so you're doing a good job rob i see you're trying it's a tough nut because you haven't found a problem so let me help you out what problem are you trying to find right now uh so the problem i'm trying to find is is um kind of the the 
Um, the problem is that I understand from what we've discussed is that- No, 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 no. what problem are you trying to find? Because your product or service should, hit, should only solve a handful of problems. I don't know, one, five, seven, 10, 12, whatever. So you should be trying to find one of those, right? So you're doing a good job of discovery, but what problem are you trying to find that if you get me to say I have it, and then you can measure the impact, I should have to buy. What problem is that? Uh, that you're not getting feedback immediately after you're, you're looking at weekly reports or monthly reports of feedback and you're not taking that feedback right away to, to make improvements the next time you meet with the customer. Okay. So from a, from a current perspective, when I told you that I'm getting the feedback through survey gizmo, right? So why didn't you dig like, okay, let's go with it. survey gizmo. I tell you that I also get feedback directly from the customers and the clients. And I guess the third feedback is they hire me to do more or they want me to come back. Right? So I'm getting right. those types of feedback when right. I didn't have a problem. Is that why you switched? Because I didn't have a problem there. Um, so, I mean, I think, I think when I was looking future, like future state is, is that you're hot. I mean, my thought was, I see how a pretty big problem could arise when you're hiring, you're scaling and bringing on three new people. Okay. And I think that if you're not, if you're not getting real time feedback between actually delivering a training and that response from the customer, they're not going to be learning on the go. So if you provide feedback, if I provide feedback as a customer today and I don't look at that feedback until next week as a rep, then I'm not, I'm going to forget about that training. It's not top of mind, but if I get that feedback, the moment after I do that training and it tells me how I compare against the other trainers and the number one thing I need to work on, that's how every time I'm doing a training, if okay. I'm getting that- so now you're in pitch mode. Now you're in pitch so, mode, which is, which I get where you're going, right? But I, I yeah. want to root you in finding a problem. So can we agree, unless I'm missing something, because if I, if I have a problem now that I'm missing, get me to say it, but I really don't have a problem now. Is that a fair statement? Um. I mean, probably, probably not like a, a major pain. I think there, I think there could probably be ways where you could drive more expansion potentially. Um, How's than that? You are. Um, so, I, are you currently like? So you said most people are writing in and um, and saying they they absolutely love your service, right? They love your trainings. They wish they had ten more hours of it. Yep. Um, and and I know you send that up to the buyer. I know you've got good reviews, but what are you? Like, what are you doing to actually drive more reviews online? Um, and I guess that's more acquisition, but what are you doing to drive more reviews? Okay. We're asking them. So what problem are you, so is the problem you're trying to find that I'm not getting enough reviews online? Uh, I think the problem is that you're, you could get more. Ah, I get, everybody listen. Could get more is not a problem. That is a future state, right? You read the book, right? Right. right. Okay. Yep. That's a future state. Turn that into a current problem question. Are you are you getting enough? Are you getting as many reviews as you'd like to get? Hey! Look at that! Look at that! Look! Look! That's how you ask a future state question in the current state to find a problem. I would say absolutely not. That is absolutely something that bugs me. We try really hard to get people engaged on social. Um, we see them write all kinds of stuff and, and come up at the end and say, oh my God, this was this, this was amazing. They sent it privately, but no, we're not getting enough people. I, w I would love a bunch more. Okay, so why do you think you're, like why, what is the process? Like what's the current process if you, you know, you find somebody who's a fan um, what's the process to actually get them to to leave a review? We just ask, oh, we ask them. So in our follow-up email, one of the things we ask them to do is go to GQ, go to G2 and leave a review. We also ask people during the training, I say, look, you can talk about the training all day you want, all day, take out your camera, you know, talk on LinkedIn, go for it. Um, but they, they get so enthralled, they forget to do it. Um, and then I asked them at the end, I said, you'll get an email that says, um, um, uh, that says, hey, you're gonna get an email that says, please review on G2. And I say, could you please do me a favor and do that? That helps a lot. So that's, it's pretty much a, a very informal process. Okay, so that's that's 100% automated? No, it's 50% automated. The email goes out and then right. I ask people in the trainings and after the trainings, during the trainings to share. Okay, and so is there uh, is there any way where you're you're identifying your the people who really like your your super fans and and 
it's just it's just kind of one off. Every single person gets this ask to go leave a review on G two Crowd. Yeah, yeah. And is it the same message for everyone, regardless yes. of the yes. response? Yes. Yes. And at the end of every training, we send out the same email. Okay. Um, do you think that if it was more personalized, now, for now you? you're asking me to self-diagnose again? Yeah. The answer is, but the answer is no. I don't know. I don't think it was more personal would make a difference. Okay. I mean, maybe it might, but I don't. I don't think so. It might. It might. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you at this point. Like in terms of of driving G2 reviews, like I I think that might be. You know, I think that might be a pain that that we can solve, but I honestly think that the the biggest problem is kind of going to be that future state problem when you when you have the three the three new reps. And so I think you know. Okay. Just, so you got my attention on that. Actually, you've got my attention. So let me help you on this one. This was going a little long. You've done a good job, but here's a few things you could have done to really zero in on that, right? When right. I told you that, um, I think you asked the question about bringing new people on. And I was like, yeah, like that's going to be a big deal, right? And I said, right. well, I'm going to have to sit in. I think I said, if I didn't, I think I'm, I, I said, I'm going to have to sit in on three or four of their trainings with them before they are able to go out on their own. If you had asked, what is your concern about how well people can do what you do? Right? How concerned are you that these new trainers will be able to deliver the training at the level that you require that meets, because you almost went there and you, you went there and then you missed it, that meets your expectations as a trainer and meets the gap selling requirements. And I would have told you, I'm, I'm ter terrified they're going to be able to do it. This shit's not easy. I'm terrified they're not going to be able to do it. Then you could have went into, he went in before and this is, all right, so when somebody, after the first two times you sat with them on them, they go out with the first time on their own, how will you know how they did besides the um, besides the, the survey? Suppose the survey comes back strong, but they, they're they teaching the wrong message. How would you know that? See what I'm doing here? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I was like, I wouldn't know if they're doing the wrong message. So you could, so then you could say, so conceivably they could get high rankings, but be teaching the wrong shit. Yeah, they could be. Then you can ask me to self-diagnose. You'd be like, so that would not be bode well for you, would it? No, that would not bode well for me. Right? So then you say, well, how without you, without you going out on every single training, how would you know? Right? So you yeah. you you planted a seed whether you recognize it or not. And I'm willing to talk to you again and dig in further. So the one question I have though is how in the world are you going to be able to get me an observable moment or how are you going to be able to allow me to see what that rep is doing in these things so I can assess how well they did or if they did it right within a day before they go to the next one? Um, so you know how Uber, Uber has right millions of drivers and almost none of those drivers ever actually talk to corporate, but yet it's a self-sustaining model. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I, well, I think it's the reason is because they have that app and they have to keep a certain 4.9 star rating. Oh, right? yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. And so they're getting they're getting this real time feedback. So put this in your world. Imagine. Imagine you drove in an Uber car and it was really smelly, right? And so I don't want to, no, I don't want to talk about Uber. You talk about my business. I you no. know what I do. You gap sell me in my business. It's, everybody listening, it's a mistake everybody makes. You actually start talking about businesses that have nothing to do with theirs. Stay in yeah. mine. Stay in my business. Okay. Well, imagine if one of your new trainers gave you uh, or, or did their first training, right? And as soon as all of this feedback comes through from the customer, instead of it going to you to kind of analyze and scratch your chin and try to understand what it all means and try to provide a weekly report and say, this is what you should do. What if that feedback, the moment it came in, it came back to the to one of your trainers, letting them know, this is what your customers are saying you need to work on. This is what your customers are saying you're doing better. This is how you rank compared to the other. I, I love all that. I love all that. But we we can take that information from Survey Gizmo and give it to them right away. So what are you what are you guys going to do different, right? That allows that allows that's going to get the people to actually take the survey like immediately. Like what what is different there? Is that, are are you are you having a problem with response rates with Survey Gizmo? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't run that every day to day. I'd have to ask Brady or Danielle. I don't know. Okay. Uh, and so if you if you weren't getting the uh, so that's kind of hard to diagnose right if you don't know 
um, so if you don't know what the response rates are. Okay, so here's the deal. And then I, and then I, I got a jet because we run out of time. Just, but you, yeah. you got, look, you, you're the first person to get me interested. I'm exploring it in my head. What, where is your value proposition? Is your value proposition the data and how it's manipulated and delivered? Is your value proposition in an increase um, um, a response rate? Is this something that is done in the meeting real time? Is this something that people need to have on their debt? Like real quick, how does that work? Yes. So, you know, there's kind of two camps in terms of feedback. So camp number one is we're collecting this feedback to, to simply collect a score, to have a high level overview of what the, of what this feedback actually is from clients. And we just kind of get that feedback, analyze it. Um, camp two is we're collecting this feedback, but we're closing the loop with every client to um, show empathy if they didn't have the best experience. It, it's really closing the loop and taking action, which most um, survey tools don't do. And the other piece is just creating culture where everybody takes ownership of customer experience. Where it's all, right, so, all right, so got it. So, so, all right. So you told me a lot about what you do. Okay. So yeah. for that, our next conversation, and we'll do it after Christmas and stuff as I get close to hiring trainers, I'll talk some more, but here's my last final piece of advice to you. When, when a customer says, help me understand and say mm. how you need to tell how, right? So in my head, I'm trying to figure out how is this going to be different than my survey? How are you gonna get people to take it more often? How are you going to get data that I'm not getting now? How can I use that data differently? Like you didn't really explain all that. So I'm still thinking it's just a glorified survey taker, right? So you weren't able to, to cook me when I was trying to get there. So we had a future state problem, potential future state problem that I'm not gonna be able to monitor and assess the success rate of future trainers without being there for everyone, which I can't do. They could potentially go to another buyer, uh, another training, with having just made a huge mistake and make the mistake again. I don't want that to happen. So you got me there, mm -hmm. that, you know, with that small problem, right? Whether it's this big or that big, we don't know yet. You got to start to get me to see how it, what you're offering is really different from an execution perspective than what I'm doing right now. Okay. And those are the technical problems, right? Make any sense? So there's the business problem. Yeah. Now what were the yeah. technical problems? Okay. So I hate to cut you off, but I got another person, got another one he's coming up, but I'm not doing this one live. I'm recording this one and I'll drop it tomorrow, I think. But, um, okay, Rob, was this helpful? Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, I'd love to meet again. Okay. And I was thinking, what would you think of, uh, of doing a live, live demo where you can tell me, tell me what the hell I'm doing wrong or right? You want to do the demo too? All right, yeah, we'll do the demo live. I'll let you come back and do that. But here's the deal. When we get together next, you got to do a better job at assessing my problem. What's the impact or perceived impact? And then you got to connect the two with why you guys are different. But yeah, we'll do a live demo. I'm down with that. All right, cool. Well, uh, hope you have a great holiday season, Keenan. Appreciate the opportunity and uh, we'll talk again. You too, baby. Look, you did a good job. You're the first person. You've got a, a lead now. You've got a lead now. Right? You didn't have a you have a lead you didn't have before. I wouldn't call it an opportunity yet because you don't have a real identified problem, but you definitely have a lead and we're gonna talk some more. So folks, like I said, if I need it, I will buy it. Rob Riley here with what did you say? No, how did what's the name? Uh, ask nicely. Oh, ask nicely. <laughs> with ask nicely did a fantastic job. Look. He, he was a tough one because he's trying to sell to a future state without a current problem, but he, he identified a potential current problem, which he now at least has a real lead. If you think you can get sell me, hit me up, DM me, I'll make it happen. For everybody else, thank you for watching. I hope you're getting something from these. And please do me a favor, put some comments in here, share, spread the love. Until next time, Rob, thank you very much. All I hear, go get the money. So I go get it. Get it, get it. Hate means I do something.